Greetings to our viewers. We praise the Lord for his faithfulness and his mercy that endures forever and has kept us such that we see another day. I we invite you to join us for this episode. Be excited, be encouraged, be inspired, jump up and down and enjoy the discussion that we're going to have today. I'm your host, Zukiswa, and my panelists will introduce themselves. We'll start on this side. I am Neo Kopedi. My name is Tuvalen Osingwenyu. My name is Nonsugele Dondokoma. And I am Kwasin Atizuma. Thank you so much. We're going to begin with a word of prayer. And Sister Nsigi, can you open for us? Let us pray. Our kind and heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for this moment. We thank you for gathering us in this session. We thank you for the word that you have given us. Today, we are going to discuss the chapter Hass and Jerome, your children who had the spirit of martyrdom, who died for your word. Oh, dear Lord, help us with your Holy Spirit to understand the things that are written and help your viewers at home, Father God, and prepare their hearts to have a receptive spirit, Father God, towards your word and help us to glean the lessons that we are supposed to glean from these le- f- uh, readings, Father God. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. So we have been journeying through the history of the Christians, right? We started off in Jerusalem, and then we spoke about um, persecution, darkness. We went into the wild and seas and how wonderful they were. And in our previous episode, we spoke about the morning star of the Reformation. So we find ourselves in chapter six today, and we're going to be discussing Hass and Jerome. Yes. Now, before we get into Hass and Jerome and who they were and what these wonderful men of God did, the context of where we start has to do with what the effects of persecution were. So maybe let's start there. Okay. So if you read that, this book, um, there's actually a trend of events where you find God's people being attacked for preaching the word and spreading the word. So it actually shows that if the devil is at work, he does not want the word of God to reach people because he knows that that's how we'll be saved. Mm -hmm. And he does not want us to be saved. He wants us to go to the fire in hell with him. Mm -hmm. So that is why he works tirelessly to take us out from reading and spreading the word. And he makes it difficult by persecuting us. Mm. We find it in the Bible that in, 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 the, in the book of Matthew chapter 5, and I'm going to read from verse 10, it says, Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Blessed are you when people insult you, mm. persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad. Because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Mm-hmm. So, Bazalwane, these verses, they encourage us that whatever that we encounter here on earth mm-hmm. is nothing compared to the reward that we'll receive when we get into heaven. Yeah. So we should not be discouraged when we come across all sorts of things that will discourage us from mm-hmm. preaching. We should not stop preaching the mm-hmm. word. Because these people, they even died, you know, mm. but they never stopped because they knew that w- what is it for a man to gain mm. uh, the world and lose heaven? Mm. So, Bazalani, we need to know that whatever that we are facing right here, Christ will always be with us. Yes, yes. Mm. Wow, Brother Nat, you've put it quite nicely there, you know, to paint a different perspective and picture and understanding of, a, of, a, of persecution because... From, uh, from ordinary use of the word, you know, your everyday use of the word persecution, you're thinking suffering, something you should run away from. It's not necessarily something you would think of as a, a way of obtaining a blessing. Brilliant. And here, or here you are, you've read the Beatitudes telling us there's a blessing in a persecution. And indeed, we do see the blessing of going through a persecution because the word of God was localized in one space. But through persecutions, the people were scattered mm-hmm. and so the mm-hmm. word was spread abroad. Amen. So yeah. so indeed that is a blessing that we see that comes with persecutions. Mm-hmm. When you think about persecution, um, it, it, people don't want to be persecuted, especially into this generation. You know, they look at you in a way that if you're persecuted, then there must be something wrong that you did. But there is a blessing from persecution. There are actually some things that you will learn in the process of you being persecuted. In fact, when you read the writings of um, Martin Luther, Mm. he speaks about this. He says, if you don't have any cause of which you want to die for, then what's the purpose for you to actually live? Mm. Mm. 
Mm. It's really important to actually find your way along those persecutions because we are persecuted either way. That's mm-hmm. true. And 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 as as Sister Nzi had mentioned that through the persecutions the yeah. gospel was then allowed to spread. And we see the results of that as the gospel then came um, to Bohemia, mm. which is the location where we find Hassan Jerome. Mm. Yeah. Um, but before Hassan Jerome even came about, um, the gospel um, had already started having its effect in the country of Bohemia. Yeah. Um, and there were already people who were being raised up who were denouncing um, the corruptions that were in the papal system at yeah. that time, mm-hmm. you know. And as a result of that, um, there was a, a particular pope, um, his name was um, Gregory the Seventh, and he issued out a bull. Um, it, it was some sort of a proclamation in those days, you know. And whenever um, the pope in that region would take out a, a, a some sort of a proclamation, that bull, you know, that area would be troubled because it was like, um, because of the the Pope has written against you, yeah. it's like now the the gates of heaven are closed hey. against you. Like now hey. you are in the gates of hell. So um, the reason why they had put that that bull was was to try and limit um, the spread of the gospel in that region. And the the contents of the bull was that from now on, um, the the people could not um, talk about the gospel. You know, in 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 their native language. Um, they limited um, public worship. So you could see that they were trying to suppress the work of the gospel in that region. And we had mentioned in previous chapters as well yeah. um, how the gospel, how the Bible itself, number one, was prohibited from being cir- circulated, mm-hmm. but also that it was in um, a language that was not readily understood yeah. by yeah. people. Yeah. So the fact that it was, uh, um, could be available in the language of or the native language, whatever country it would be, um, would help the people to to grasp the gospel as well, and I think it's 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 an important point because you know as the gospel commission says that um, this gospel must go out to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. So we must try and reach as many people as we can, but oh, yes. also in their native language, so we can in so we see um, yes, yes. The, in their tongue, in their language. Thank mm-hmm. you. Um, so we see um, the effects of the gospel in Bohemia before Hassan Jerome came, and. Um, the response by um, the Pope to try and suppress um, the spreading of the gospel in that country. So I just wanted us to talk about um, who Hass is, mm. because the chapter is about Hass and Jerome. Yeah. You know, just uh, a little bit of biographical information uh, I would like to share here yeah. in terms of who is Hass and where does it come from. So already we know that we're in Prague, yeah, which is Bohemia, okay? And the Bohemian language is, is what is spoken here. We do see that the writer in the Great Controversy, chapter 6 specifically, tells us that he came from a humble background. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. His father had passed away. Mm-hmm. I do not know why the writer says often, because we would think of an orphan as a child who does not have both parents. Mm-hmm. But at least in, 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 as it is recorded, he had a parent and mother. Yeah. And there is something about this mother. She is recorded as a pious mother, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, who yeah. was the mother of of of, of her? And the, the the piousness of of this woman is such that she prized the word of God, the fear of the Lord, mm. and education. All right. Yeah. She sacrificed everything, even though they were impoverished, because back in those days, yeah. when you didn't have a father, you were considered poor, and they mm. were a poor family. Mm. Um, you know, and um. She prized education and she sacrificed everything for us to obtain his education. He went to the high school, okay? And uh, he, he did exceptionally well because mm. he was a child who had who was uh, uh, diligent and, and, and respectful of the mother's wishes and all that. From the high school, he then proceeded to the University of Prague. And we do learn from the records that he was a, a distinguished scholar yeah. and, 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 and a well-respected scholar. And his intelligence was, was, was charming and, and attractive, you know, to, in the scholarly circles of that time. We do learn that Haas then beca- goes to the priest uh, school and then he does become a, a university professor and then later on, a rector of the university, so 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 that's what we learn. But but uh, from from his biographical information. But just briefly, the mother, the importance of a mother. Even mm-hmm. then, we see here the importance of a mother. When even when the mother accompanies us 
to the university. Mm. She does not have any gift, opulent gifts or hey. expensive gifts yeah. to give to the son. Yeah. What does she do? She kneels down and pray. Okay. Okay. And, and that is the biggest gift she has to the son, you know, as he enters the university. So we need pious mothers, and pious mothers are important to have in, in, in our lives. I'm just reminded of Hannah. Oh, Hannah. Yes. Hannah is an example of a pious mother yes. in, 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 our, in the Bible. One of the pious mothers, you know? And parenting also, train up a child. Yes. Yeah, in the way he should go. And then when he is old, he shall not depart from it because you've trained him while he was still young. And has is a perfect example of a child who was trained up by a God-fearing mother. I have a daughter. Mm. So you will never know if you have a son, for example, that this is the next John Huss. Yeah. Right now, we, 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 the world is full of crime, is full of drugs. If you go and you investigate those cases and you go to the families, you see with the problem where it started, yeah. the parenting. Yeah. Uh, most of the time, the, the fathers are always absent. Their mothers, if they are there, but they are not a good example into their kids, the mm. things that they are doing. Because kids, they will just, as much as they will listen to what you teach them, but they'll, most of the time they watch what you do. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very important for us to, to properly raise our kids because you don't know, this must be the person, this, this can be the person who will preach this gospel to the world. Mm. Little did she know that the, the, this son that I'm raising as a single parent mm. is the one who's going to preach the gospel. Yeah. So this, this, this is a very, very serious job as a parent. We need to train up a child and sim kuli in a way that when he is is old he is going to carry this gospel because our mandate is to go ye therefore mm -hmm. and teach me more Amen. but it's very difficult for kids to 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 to, to do that if it does not start at home they say charity mm -hmm. begins at home so it is up 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 to us as parents siblings everyone just make sure that your young ones that are coming after you you set up a good example so that when they grow up they know that i want to be like my mother i want to be like my father and my sister because you are setting up a good example. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was also looking to Sister Ntsege, she quoted uh, Proverbs chapter 22, train up a child. It's yeah. very important to train mm -hmm. up your child. And it's not necessarily sitting down and, you know, opening a Bible. It's actually the decision to make. Mm -hmm. You know, I always preach at the, uh, at the churches and tell them that, you know, when 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 we are when you are hitting your wife, you are actually training. But mm. we are actually and the young and yeah. husband. You are actually training the decisions that you make. And exactly, teach the child at all. This is the way it is. That's yeah. how we do things. Yes, yes. That's the training. It's actually practical. <laughs> and another point I think I'd like to just highlight here is um, how Hus came from humble beginnings. Yeah. As cousin C had mentioned um, in the previous chapter, um, Wycliffe. Um, he came from a much more wealthy. He is. He was much yeah. more privileged. Yeah. You know, but God was still able to use him. You know, because mm -hmm. he he consecrated himself to God. Um, and what I'm trying to 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 highlight here is that God can use anyone. Yes. Yeah. Whether they come yeah. from privileged uh, backgrounds or even from humble. And 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 I guess the majority of people come from humble backgrounds. But mm -hmm. that does not mean that God cannot use you. Oh, yes. You know, yeah. um, little is much when God is oh, in yeah. it. You know. Um, as long as we place ourselves in God's hands and are willing to be used by God, um, we don't know the consequences of where he can take us. Yes. Um, Hus was a man of, of great talents, you know. Um, he didn't let his poor background be it. I mean, we, we can all use excuses to say no, but look where I come from. Mm -hmm. But he didn't use that as that. And he excelled as, a, as, as, a, as an academic, as a student in whatever station that he was put in. So yeah, it doesn't matter what our backgrounds are, God can still use us wherever we may be. That's very true. I actually like what he says that, you know, it's, it doesn't matter about the, you know, the background, the background, the background is nothing. In fact, the background has to actually give you that power. Motivation, yeah, yeah. We are not just highlighting the idea of good parenting, but then we also go into the idea of friendship. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think we'll definitely carry on on that note. But first, we're going to a break, so stay tuned, don't leave us.
Welcome back. Thank you for staying tuned. We're going to continue with our discussion. And we were just about to talk about Jerome and the friendship that Hass and Jerome had. So let's let's get into Jerome. Okay, Jerome. Um, much is not said about um, Jerome, but we are told that he's a citizen of Prague. Mm. You know, he had actually came from England, having a certain kinds of like writings. And he associated himself with John Haas and they became friends. And I want us to talk also about the friendship that we keep, you know, the friends that we have. It's not necessarily pe the people that we actually are friends with, but the things that we do, the things that keep us co um, company. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, keep mm -hmm. us company. They are the ones that are, are our friends. So yeah, Jerome, yeah, is actually friends with um, John Hart. So yeah, friendship. Yeah. To your point, they, their friendship was also quite um, complementary. Mm -hmm. If I should put it that way. Yeah. You no. Know? Um, when when you read the chapter, it tells us that. Um, Jerome, in terms of um, natural talents, you know, he was the more superior guy, you know. Mm. Um, he was more eloquent, um, more educated. I mean, he went to England um, where he came back with the writings of Wycliffe, you know, and started to spread them as well in Bohemia. Um, but um, in as much as he was superior in terms of um, talent, in terms of intellect, eloquence, you know, um, Huss, on the other hand, he was the more mature, you know, mm -hmm. the more wiser um, of the two friends, more calm. Um, more calm, you know. Mm -hmm. And he would be that because, you know, Jerome would be like maybe the more impulsive or impetuous guy, but you'd always need that stabilizing influence, you yeah. know, sometimes. Mm -hmm. that, calm. Yes, and, and, exactly. it, and it's always good to have these these complementary um, Character. characteristics yeah. in people, mm -hmm. you know, because it helps. If you are both impulsive, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you're in trouble, but then... But then sometimes you need the other oh, person to push, yes, to, yeah, to, to, to push you, you know, yeah, to, yeah. so, um, yeah, we can see it working well. And, and some other biblical examples, Paul and Silas, you oh, know, yeah. when Christ sent out the 70, sent them two by two, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, so it shows that um, there's, 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 there's a benefit and there's a blessing um, to having um, friendship. And like, like you mentioned, it's not just any friendship, but friendship. That, that encourages, that builds, you know, that also helps to strengthen your relationship with God and helps to also further the work of the gospel. So, yeah, friendship is a, is a, is a very important um, aspect of spreading the gospel as well. Absolutely, because, you know, I'm reminded of the popular saying, uh, birds of the same feathers flock together. Yes. Okay, and then from the Bible, we have verses such as, uh, can two walk together, except they must agreed, they must uh, they avoid the company of, of, of bad people because they caught up a good manner tree, you know. Yes. We have all those things in the Bible written for us to emphasize the importance of keeping good company yes. because yes. it is for your own character building, the amount of influence and then to put to put it in today's language, peer pressure that one goes through cannot be underestimated and that is why good friends are important to keep and to have. Yes. Another thing that I want us to focus on is that I see right now we are talking only about the good friends. Yeah. But it is also important for us to be good friends to those bad friends. Yeah. For example, myself, I, my, the people I grew up with, most of them, I can say they are bad influence. But I don't stop being friends with them because I become the light into that darkness. Because mm -hmm. if we neglect them, remember, we need to show love in the process as much yeah. as we won't allow them to corrupt us. Because, mm -hmm. you know, when especially if you are one against five, sometimes you end up. But we need also to be not neglect those people, but mm -hmm. to be that light, because there's many people who can change their ways just because of that one friend <laughs> who was the light and they changed their ways because of that light. Because remember, if we have God in our side, guys, there's nothing that is impossible. Yeah. The Bible says what is impossible in man. You can have a thousand of friends, but if you have Christ, it's thousand against thousand mm -hmm. because you have a backup that is backing you up. So if you will be able to be that light and you show them the path. I actually like this discussion because it's, it's talking about how, you know, people of God who may be believing the truth, they are not living in silos on their own. Yeah. You know, we have this, yeah. this image that we must just be on our own. We must yeah. all be John the Baptist, but yeah. there's a place in the gospel for friendship, which is exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. But I want us to also now, you know, move on with the, with the story and talk about the summons that, you know, were being issued against, mm -hmm. you know, 
Haas and what was going on with it, because we know that by the time that the story continues, Haas is preaching, but there's an issue with, you know, summons coming up and now there's a whole lot that's going on. So I want us to get into that. What about the two strangers? The, the two aren't yes. 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 That's yes. actually my favorite part. <laughs> yeah. Before they came in, you know, I mean, mm. I, I think those two strangers were quite a pivotal part of the story. Exactly, yeah. Mm. And they just came out of nowhere. <laughs> but, you know, the effect that they had, you know, was quite profound. You know? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we saw, so we have the two artists coming in from England, okay? And these are people who were necessarily influenced by the writings of Whitecliffe, yeah. mm-hmm. John Whitecliffe. And they had this truth, you know, that was burning in them. And they had a purpose to use their talents and art as a, as a way of protesting, okay, against the prevailing status quo at that time. So these guys painted two beautiful pictures. We don't necessarily have access to the original pictures they painted. But I'm sure from the description that we get in the re- in what is recorded in yes. the book, any artist in nowadays can reproduce the two yes. pictures. But the first picture, okay, or just before I get into the details of what was in the pictures, the pictures were uh, 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 seeking to convey a message that put a contrast yeah. between the humility of Jesus Christ and the pride and pomp of Rome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because the first picture is a depiction of Jesus Christ uh, on that mule, okay, yeah. on that S, yes, okay, with his disciples. And it, the, the narrative says the disciples had their travel stricken robes, mm-hmm. they were barefooted mm-hmm. and had nothing on their heads. Mm-hmm. So you can have an imagination of what their clothes look like, mm-hmm. all right, as they accompanied Jesus into Jerusalem. All right, of course, people took pr- palm branches and all that and made the entrance yeah. that much more respectable. But then the artists paint in the second picture a depiction of how the, the Roman emperors, their prelates, mm-hmm. shares and popes, you know, and, and their apparel, the ways in which they would be clothed, the opulence that accompanies mm-hmm. them, you know, mm-hmm. the entire proceeding, uh, the pompousness, the pride that accompanies it so that you see the sharp contrast between these two and how they are not in agreement, but it's a sharp contradiction of two different stories. Now it is recorded that Haas, you know, when he looked upon these pictures, okay, then these pictures made a deep impression on him mm. and it, and they became the, the foundation of which it becomes to question and think more deeply about issues and the current status quo and the practices they were engaged in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, the, and the people as well, you know, um, and, 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 and what I'd probably add to that is that um, the, the, the pictures were a sermon on its own. Mm-hmm. And yeah. there's a saying that says a picture is worth a thousand words. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you don't even have to say much, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, there's one um, gospel writer who says, preach always, yeah. if necessary, use always. words, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, if necessary. Yeah. So there they had they had used um like you said the paintings. Mm-hmm. And I can just imagine the people going there and looking at the paintings. You may not necessarily have to see any words, but like you said, the striking contrast between the two. Mm. Christ coming on a donkey, which is also a symbol of peace. Mm. But when we think about how these ones came with all the pompousness that you mentioned opposite. And how violent that church was as well in terms of persecuting. You know, he has a peaceful person. He has a system that is very bloodthirsty and is and is persecuting people. And I can just imagine the people thinking about this. And um, it must have really made a deep impression on them to yeah. say, yeah. So, yeah, just that, that painting must yeah. have really spoken. You know, words. what comes to my mind when, we, when mm. I, I read about that is that these guys used their talent. Yeah to preach yeah mm. you know in nowadays you find people who say um but i cannot pre evangelize mm. you know mm. we can use yeah. our different talents to spread the word yeah? yeah some people are gifted in in in, in writing paint you know uh, you can have a, a a painting that will just just by looking at the picture there are many things that you learn when you pick up from that thing mm. imagine if it's a picture of jesus you know and also some people are gifted in in, in 
singing, yeah. you know. So as, as people right now, we should use our talent mm -hmm. to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people are not interested in scripture. You know, if you come to them and then you, you, you preach to them, they are not. But if you sing a song, yeah. that can bring them to Christ. Yeah. So we need to use our talents. These guys, they, 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 they didn't not to say a word, but they just painted a picture. And that picture mm -hmm. spoke a thousand yeah, means. Yeah. So we also need to, if you know that I am not that good in preaching, mm. just do something. Find your talent and use it for the glory of God. Mm. They got the message. Yeah. yeah. They understood mm. the message and they, you know, looked at both the pictures. The message was clear. Yeah. Mm. 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 So so it was it was profound but it was simple. Yeah. Mm. Yes. But so you, you couldn't miss the message. Yeah. yeah. So but when you reflect on it, you know, it would really make a deep impression on it. And I think also the simplicity of the gospel, which when, when we preach to people, we should also just make it simple yes. for them mm. so that they can understand, you know, um, but they will be able to interpret it. Like you say, it yes. was very difficult for you to miss that message. It was a powerful. Even in these current times that we live in, you know, COVID made us to think outside the box as Christians mm. because we were in quarantine. Uh, we were on lockdown, so we couldn't spread the word. So we can use technology to yeah. spread the word. Yeah. That's yeah. another way. So in other words, there should not be a point in time where we say, I cannot say anything about God, mm -hmm. because God will always uh, make it that it's possible for us to preach. Mm -hmm. We just need to pay attention to the talents that we have. Some people are good with IT. Mm -hmm. You know, they use the very same technology to spread the word. Mm -hmm. So this is a very powerful uh, section because it teaches us that you need to to, to preach the gospel in many different ways. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember also my friend, she can't preach. Mm. Can't do, yeah, she can't preach, but she, she was doing the charity work in homes, mm. buying new orders. That is a sermon on its own. True. Mm. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So the pulpit is unlimited. Yeah, yeah. yeah got so many pulpits. <laughs> the smile also, it's just the sermon on its own. Being yeah. kind hearted, yeah, and yeah. especially in today's time. After that, you know, the way that painting had caused so much great consternation, you know, that, um, I mean, that they even tried to deface it, you yeah. know. Um, and those guys, because of the work that they had done there, um, after some time, you know, their safety, you know, was put at risk and mm -hmm. they had to, you know, go back to England. Um, but their work had been done yeah. through the talents that they used mm -hmm. and um, has, you know, started carrying the work forward, you know, and, and really... Um, taking the work of reformation in Bohemia to such an extent that um, it started making noise, you know, in mm. the wrong circles. And mm. then they started to notice that, hey, there's this guy has, you know, yeah. um, he's, he's really causing trouble there in Bohemia. And you know how the papacy would, would, would react, you know, they would write a letter to say, hey, we want this guy to come, you know, and answer mm. to us. But, you know, in those days for you to go, you know, to Rome, um, it was basically certain death you know, mm. um, but because of 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 not imperiling um, the gospel at the time, you know, has decided to to retreat, you know, to his home village where he mm. where he grew up. And I think there's a lesson for us there as well to say that you know, when you've done your work in a certain po uh, point of time, you know, um, sometimes we do not have to endanger the further spreading of the gospel mm. if if you being retreating to a more safer place, you know, not that you're going to be idle, but you're going to continue the work there. It can also help um, to spread the gospel. But not only that, mm -hmm. he also had um, the protection of some of the nobles there from his university mm -hmm. where he was, because he was quite loved there mm -hmm. and from the king and the queen at that time. Mm -hmm. um, so even our influence can extend to other yeah. communities who can also work on God's behalf as well. It's very true. Your point is actually reminding me of Christ and John the Baptist, we know they were contemporaries. And when Christ enters the scene, John's disciples, you know, are kind of like, what's happening? You know, our master's place is being taken. And the two of them decide that they are not going to cause friction with each other. You know, so Christ retreats. And when it's time for him, you know, to get on the scene, then John, you know, retreats. But you find exactly that, that, you know, we don't have to hinder the gospel if your time is done make space for the next person to to do what they need to do if you need to step aside a little bit to rest do that and then you'll come back mm. but i want us to go to an ad break we've discussed a whole lot of things we've discussed talents and i want the viewers to think about 
what talent has, has God given you? Yeah. You know, in Matthew 25, we hear about um, servants that were given one talent, three talent, five talents. And God wanted them to multiply those talents, yeah. or at least the master in that instance wanted them to multiply the talents. And the question is, what talents have you been given? And are you using all of your talents? Well, Christ, you know, say to you, well done, thou good and faithful servant, because you used your talents. So think about that as we take a break. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back from the break. Thank you for staying tuned. We're going to pick up from where we were talking about Hus and particularly the issue of summons and the interdict that eventually was put upon Prague because Hus was pre <coughs> and it was causing a lot of dissension and issues, right? Now, an interdict at this point, you know, it means that the Prague itself um, has lost certain privileges, you know, that they used to have. So, for example, um, they cannot use the churchyard um, for burial or for marriage. And there's people who are specific about being married at church, you know, or <laughs> getting married at church. So you can imagine how much of a problem it, it would cause. You know, the, the sinners that are in purgatory waiting for release cannot be released because there's an interdict, you know. So obviously this would cause a, a big problem in the city. And there were a lot of people that had issues with it. Yeah. And you know, part of when you mentioned purgatory, it's partly the uh, one uh, part of their making in their doctrines. You know, mm -hmm. now people find themselves stressed so much because you can imagine the anxiety that people were going through. Mm -hmm. At all, oh, my aunt is burning and burning, and I can't have access to jet to go and buy her out. Yeah. You know, that kind of a thing. So the people then uh, endured the interdict for as much as they could, and they want to commend the efforts of the. Prague people for trying to protect us from the cruelty that they for certain knew he was going to face in Rome if he were to go there. They tried and they were willing to endure, you know, the discomforts that came with the interdict. But then it is recorded in the book, Great Controversy, in this chapter, that there was a particular class of people, you know, who could not take it anymore and they just could not bear the suffering, you know, and the consequences that came with the interdict. And they advocated that Hus must be given up to Rome, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, instead of having all the masses suffer, True. Uh, Hus must just be given up to Rome. Of course, it's not mentioned which class in particular. We just told a particular yeah, class yeah, of yeah. people, you know, we could not take it anymore. Yeah. I'm just thinking in today's terms, when your certain privileges are curtailed, and, and the, if there's some suffering that people have to go through, uh, which class in particular would be the first one to, 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 to cry out and say, hey, 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 stop this thing, you know? You, you can just imagine it. it. It must have been a crisis, you know, because now Haas is seeing the effect that this interdict is having on the city itself, you know, and knowing that um, he's the one who's caused um, all of this. Yeah. And... You know, he was summoned, you know, to the Council mm. of Constance. Yeah. You know, um, he was supposed to be given safe passage, you know, mm. and and the Emperor Sigismund, I think, if I'm mm -hmm. pronouncing it properly, um, he he had said that, yes, he would be safe, you know, mm. um, nothing would happen to him. And, oh, lip service. And, and because of that, you know, Hass, you know, he was, maybe he was naive, I don't know, but he believed it and he decided, you know, let me go to yeah. the council of uh, Constance and go and answer for myself, you know, mm. but, you know, as he goes there, she he, of no return. Yeah. Oh, no. And I think even he himself, you know, when he writes to his friends, yeah. he wrote a yeah, man who was not coming. Yeah. 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 So I think he already knew what, that he was facing his fate and he gets there and he gets arrested. Um, not only that, he is put in a dungeon, which um, was quite foul, um, which then made him sick. You know, yeah. um, and he spent some time there. But after some time, you know, he had to go there and and answer um, to 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 the authorities. You know, yeah. and mm -hmm. they tried to get him to recant. Mm -hmm. You know, but as as he stood there, um, he could not recant. You know, you can't do anything for the truth. Um, I mean, against the yeah. truth, but for the truth. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. and we know that in the end, um, he he was actually burned. You know, mm -hmm. at the stake. Yeah. And um, 
it, it, it just makes you think, you know, that, you know, some people will have to be called to martyrdom. Mm. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, we have other biblical examples. You mentioned John the Baptist, mm-hmm. you know, he also had to go through um, um, that trial as well. That, But, you know, after they had burned, what, what I like about the story is that after they had burned his body and they had gathered up his ashes, they threw it into the river Rhine, you mm-hmm. know, almost like Wycliffe, though his body was exhumed after he died, they burnt his remains and put it in the river Rhine. But um, that was quite um, poetical in that as they scattered their, their ashes in that river, it was almost like they were scattering, you That's know, the gospel cool. into the yeah. other regions mm. in Europe. So okay. it just shows that the more that they tried to, to, to suppress it was the more that the gospel spread. Mm. Yeah, well, mm. Mm. It's interesting because when you hear the word martyr, you, 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 you would wa- want to save your life generally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then what does Christ say? Anyone who seeks to save his life is not worthy of me. Yeah. You know, so it, God help us to have the spirit of martyr. Don't we have in numerous examples, Daniel, okay, but God saved him, but he was willing to die and then run into the den of lions. Yeah. Okay, Stephen. Stephen. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, 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 yeah. The Hebrew boys, you know, were willing to be thrown into the fire. So, so we have uh, numerous examples which are object lessons for us and the throughout the Bible, you know, for us to, 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 to know and stand for what we believe in to the point of death. Mm. Okay, because has fought that he would not go against his own conscience. The dream God gives him, he in a sense is telling him, yes, you are going to die. Oh. When look, yes. your death is not for nothing. Yes. It is. Yes. What you have started is not dying. Yeah. It is continuing and it lives on. Yeah. You know, right. because they might have tried to destroy it by killing you, but in essence, they have not destroyed it. It continues to, to, to live on. Yeah. So I think that was an encouraging dream because then from having seen the people come in, the people he used to preach to, come in and restore the portraits of Jesus Christ on the walls of the chapel, that on its own gave him the, uh, enough courage to go and face the state. True. Talking about courage, uh, we actually find that Jerome, yeah. hey. wanting to mm. go and help us, yeah. right? Yeah. He quickly runs to where Hass was and he realizes very quickly that the situation is very bad and he's probably not going to be able to help him. And then he hopes to go back and he's caught, right? right? Mm. So now he's in a dungeon, he's in prison. And it's bad. Aish, with him, his story also was quite sad, you know. And this is where, when we're talking about his character, it was very impetuous. Mm-hmm. And it shows when the house was not there, there wasn't anyone to stabilize him. Oh, yeah. Then when he realized that, no, actually, I made the wrong decision mm-hmm. and he tries to go back, it's too late, they catch him. Yeah. And his fate was even worse, you know, because yeah. he stayed in the dungeon for, for a longer time. The year. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know. Nice. And, you know, the book says that he was chained in a very... Um, um, awkward position yeah. which caused a lot of suffering to him, mm. you know. So much so that, I mean, when he went there, he was willing to die. Yeah. Mm. But when he when he got in front of the council itself and they asked him to recant, you know, because of the suffering that he had yeah. endured, he decided to recant, you know. Yeah. Um, they take him back to that dungeon and as he's sitting there, mm. the Lord doesn't leave him to his devices. Yeah. You know, through his spirit, he pricks his conscience. And he remembers, you know, how Christ himself died, how Hus, mm. um, his own mentor, you know, also went through and he felt, no, you know what, I, I need to go back there, you know. And it makes me think about other biblical characters who feel they may have disappointed the Lord, like yeah. Peter or, or maybe Judas as well, you know, that God can give us an opportunity to repent too. Mm. Yeah, so going back to the dungeon, I'm thinking, wow, that was actually a way of the prelates and the popes and the bishops, you know, uh, exerting their power so that uh, he, he, he can be genuine about his uh, recantation because they are not sure if he's genuine, True. you know. Mm. But then it was a blessing because then an opportunity for him to seek and reflect and yeah. say, what have I done? Mm. Have I just gone against my conscience? Did I just deny the truth? Oh, no. Let me go back there and retract the recant, the recant, whatever, like a contingent that I did, yeah. and stand for the gospel, and then go and die like at the stake, like us, and that's exactly what happened. You know, that's very powerful. You know, um, there's two things that I want to highlight here. You know, when uh, John Huss was in front of the council, yeah. 
he was given a chance that if you recant, we're going to give you freedom. We're going to yeah. set you free. Mm. So some of us, uh, if we, we were in that position, mm. I know some of us were, were, were going to say, no, I just want to be free. Yeah. I have suffered enough, yeah. so I want to, to be free. Yeah. So, But they realized that I cannot s do a sin against God. Yeah. You know, what comes to mind is, is the story of Joseph. You know, when Joseph were, 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 was with Potiphar's wife, he said, I cannot do this before God. Mm -hmm. So we, whenever we are faced with, with situations like this, we need to think that we are doing this for God. Yeah. So I cannot say I just want to be free because I've suffered enough physically and then I neglect God. So we need to think about God in everything that we do. And then the second thing that I want us to, 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 to notice, the story of Jerome. After he recanted, he went back to, 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 to prison. That's where he got time to reflect. What would happen if he was set free? We don't know. Mm. And sometimes in life, God allows us to go to prisons just mm. because he wants us to show something. You know, mm. when I read about this story, when we were coming here, Ubab Matinda told us about a story where he went to prison. And when he, while he's one, he was in prison, he got this book, Great Controversy. Mm -hmm. Who knows, if he was out there, free, mm -hmm. he wouldn't have encountered this book. So God allowed him to go to jail in order to get him. Sometimes God will allow us to go to prisons just to bring us closer to him. Mm -hmm. So we should not uh, see it as a persecution. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes God can use those persecutions to bring us closer to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, Romans 8.28 says, um, you know, all things mm -hmm. work together for good to them that love God. Yeah. We don't know why we have to go into prison, yeah. but mm. God has a purpose in sending us um, to prison. And we see with Jerome coming out, mm. um, in the end, we know his fate. He was also mm. burned at this day, but um, there was a renewed sense of um, peace. conversion, peace, yeah. repentance, yeah. Um, and also conviction, you know, yeah. because there was that guy who was about to kindle the fire, he went behind it yeah. and he said, no, yeah. come in front of me, you know, I think yeah. he was ready to yeah. win. And they lit that fire and he burnt, you know, they took his ashes as well, put them into the river. But as we know, there were those ashes, they were scattered to the other nations and we can see that the gospel continued to spread because of these faithful martyrs. And I think their story also helps to encourage everyone who comes up after them to say, we can be able to endure these tests because we have seen other heroes yeah. of faith yeah. going through the same. You know, and uh, God has been faithful in, in the in the with the country of Prague because uh, Zizga and uh, Prokopa, Prokopius, I, I don't I, I always get the name incorrectly, uh, uh, are raised up as warriors, as brave warriors, you know, and God literally fights their battles in the same way yeah. that Maud was fighting all the battles of the children of Israel. Yeah. And not in the wilderness and in the process of of going to Canaan to take the land. You know, we've spoken about courage and fortitude. We've seen, you know, Hass and Jerome burning at the stake. One is praying, one is singing, and the gift of martyrdom that God had given them. And we've realized that it's not about background. It's not about where you come yeah. from. It's not about whether you're in prison or not. It's not about your skin color. It's not about your experiences. God wants to use all of us. We oh, yeah. each have different talents. We each have different gifts. And God expects us to use them for the sake of the gospel. And this is what I want us to take away from today, that God is able to equip us for the work that we need to do. Amen. And we're going to close with a word of prayer. Brother Nati, you can use the word for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this powerful discussion. We thank you also for the opportunity to read this very important book and it shows us lord that many people died for the gospel lord and please help us lord to take your word very serious the times we live in show us that the end is near help us lord to to to, to be strong in every persecutions that we come across help us lord to always read your word help us to always pray and help us, Lord, to spread this word because the world out there, Lord, is burning and your fire and, and, and your, 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 your word is needed, Lord. Help us now and give us uh, 
this knowledge that we need to go out there and use it. And when we all is said and done, Lord, we will we can be counted in your kingdom. When you come again, Lord, we will be in heaven with you. This is my humble prayer in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.